Hello everyone and you're welcome. If you're here, that means you're trying to learn Glow 3D and let's go ahead and begin. So this is a fashion designer's uh, software and it allows you to create, you know, uh, clothes, fabrics, designs, and it gives you access to models and you can use those models to create those fabric and not just creating fabrics and materials you can pose these 3d models called avatars and it gives you an interface where you can actually create virtual fabric design using stitching you know uh, sewing merging playing with the uvs and basically it gives you an efficient way to work with a software and experiment, make mistakes, and have fun intuitively in the process without wasting real life fabric. Basically, you can experiment and see what you can create with this software. It has a slight steep learning curve, but at the same time, like any other software, with practice and dedication, you're actually going to get started uh, much more smoother. So uh, to, it's a paid software, and but if you're a student, you can have access to a uh, discount if you're a student i believe they have a way of um, finding out if you're a student you can use your student id and then they can be able to give you a discount there's also an individual plan so just uh, watch out for it now i don't know if the company gives a special discount whenever there are special occasions like uh, like a new year or something like that or when they're doing sales i don't know if they have sales but if you want to find out make sure you subscribe to them and you'll be good so the first thing to do is to download the software and to get the copy of the software just click on the download icon this will give you an, an option and open up and you can actually see the uh, products you can choose your operating system and also check your system requirements now this uh, this software is processor intensive and it's actually advisable to have a system that has a very powerful GPU. Now this is coming out in Chinese, I'll just click on translate so I can have that in English and you can actually see the system requirements. So uh, the good thing is the minimum specification you can see is an 8 gigabyte memory and Intel i5 and Nvidia. So Nvidia is a uh, an awesome company I believe they are one of the leading industry on graphics processing so basically if you have a uh, gaming system that's very good you'll actually be good to go now that's the minimum requirement and also a three button mouse is awesome but you can use the keyboard shortcuts to have access to it and these are the recommended settings so it needs to two gigabyte or more and still you're seeing the high-end Nvidia uh, nvidia cards and also it needs an internet connection to download access and then also to authenticate your uh, user so basically uh, that's how uh, those are the requirements and yeah that's it so once you have downloaded that software you've downloaded it for your specific operating system i believe it's around 1.85 gigabytes or so so once you've downloaded that just double click on it and once it's done you should have a an icon so let's go ahead and click on windows and you can see this is the close standalone online authentication so that's how it actually writes the name it's super weird but that's the name that comes out so and the version is close 7.2 so like i said you need an active internet uh, connection this is just to authenticate and verify the user so i'll just go ahead and impute my my username and whoops, let's just do that. Now, because this is a demo version, you can have actually have access to a trial version and you can use the software for at least 30 days. Now, I believe 30 days is more than enough for you to have a glimpse and have like understand how the software works at least to even have a few projects with in 30 days so with uh so let's go ahead and just click ok and basically that's it so let's go ahead and close this and yours will have the 3d and 2d split views like that so that's how the default is i just kind of changed the view so that i could have some nice space to work with so this is going to be your 3D workspace and basically this is where you're going to pose an avatar 
basically basically an avatar is a 3d character and you can actually pose create seams you know create sews stitches in 3d directly on a model this is a companion 2d pattern window and on the 2d pattern window you pretty much do the same thing you do on the 3d window but this time around you have access to your two-dimensional axis so there's no 3d going on here but it has access to some 2d tools and sewing tools and then right here on the left side of the screen you'll have access to your 3d view so the first thing and the most prominent thing is to uh, kind of like get a hold of the interface so that you actually see what's going on right here now there are uh, different options and modes when you're operating and working with Clo 3D. Right here, we're on the simulation mode. And what the simulation mode does is to allow you to create simulations and you can actually see your garments in live action. So here, if I click on this drop down arrow, you can actually see the modes we have here. So there's simulation, which is the mode we have here, animation, print layout, emulator, modular, and UV editor. A UV editor is a 2D coordinate system that maps out a 3D view into an X and Y flat uh, coordinate. So here we can actually see our object browser and this will give us access to any objects we have in the scene and right here as well underneath the object browser you can actually see the property editor. So basically anything you select would have at least a few properties you can change. For instance, we can change things like the name and then see other access to the kinds of materials this is using. So you can actually see here is set to a physically based render. That's what PBR means. And we can also select a substance. Substance is a program by uh, Adobe and these softwares it allows you to create a procedural material that reacts to any kind of lighting condition and it's also parametric it means it's non-destructive and basically that's what a PBR material is and this is what a substance material is so let's go back to the top so here you can actually see this is your user account you find your username here and this is your cloud so basically you can share your designs via a closet or closet actually so and over here we can actually see the standard menus so you have your file menu edit your 3d garment and 2d garment menus your sewing menus and you can actually see very important shortcut keys your material basically you have a texture and also some other objects like your button zipper your pipings blinding top stitch seams and taping you have the editor your avatar render display the preferences now the preferences is an awesome place to kind of like make some nice changes and settings and here you also have settings you can use things like change the language and let's go ahead and jump into the uh, user settings so i'll click on user settings and this way you can make some you know little changes to the program and this way you can have access to things like your units so if i go over here to shortcuts we can see the shortcuts and you can open them up and see the shortcuts that build into the program and this is where you can change things like the ui now for the unit system you can set it to inches or centimeters i think centimeters and inches are the fairly most common ones especially for si or system international units so i'm just going to set this to inch and then the currency unit, you can set it to any currency unit for your country. I'm just going to leave this at USD, where you can change this to any other currency unit you want to use. So here we have other things like the mesh types. So setting this to a triangle is going to set the mesh for any objects import or the avatar meshes to triangles, which uh, graphic processors love walking with triangles or you can set it to quads in case you have a model that has been created that uses a face quad structure so basically that's it just for the ui i changed this to inches and what you can actually find out is after a while you can find out where you want to basically place your you know uh, windows right here and these objects so the most prominent and important thing to do is to load in an avatar so and each time you see this uh, n it means you haven't have access to these and there are new updates or new things that you need to explore over there 
So here you can actually see this uh, download bar and here is a uh, an option for you to add a custom folder. So for instance, if you have things like materials, reference images, you have some notes or you want to store your custom files or you want to store your documents or have Clo 3D have access to a specific custom content folder, this is where you can do that. Let's go ahead and click, click on that and it's going to ask you to look for where you want to store that. So I have a folder, an empty folder called my projects. I called it MLX projects. So I'll just select this folder and Clo is going to have access to that folder and store content in that folder. So first we can actually see we have the garment, we have the avatar. So if you click on the avatar and double click on that, you can actually see the avatars we have in here. So let's uh, either dro click this drop down or go over here and click the female volume two and you can actually see the character types we have right here. Now you can select either the female avatar or you can select the you know male avatar this is the version two but anyone you want to select that's totally fine uh, it comes default i believe with uh, fv underscore to maya i believe that's the default one where you can click and download any of these so you can have access to them and to use them just left click and drag and drop in your scene so you can actually have an avatar and it's going to load this avatar and uh, it depends on how your system is and we have this avatar in the scene so to move or pan around this avatar just click on hold the middle mouse button and you can pan this avatar you can grab and hold this avatar and kind of like pan it to the left right and grab it to the up and the down as well and we can actually zoom in and out by you know scroll, pulling the scroll wheel down grabbing and panning and pushing the scroll wheel up to zoom out so also this is for the 3d view to rotate if you hold the right mouse button right click sorry you can actually drag this to rotate the object the avatar you can just rotate like this so i can zoom out right click to rotate if i drag that to the left and right we can like orbit around this character and if i drag this from bottom to top we can actually see we can zoom uh, we can kind of like look and orbit around this character vertically as well so that's how we can uh, use these uh, options pretty straightforward right click to rotate middle mouse button to kind of like pan grab and pan the object and then the uh, left click is used to select specific uh, sections of an object if you're also close to an object you can right click for instance on these shoes and you can click on hide avatar this is going to hide the avatar let's bring the avatar back by pressing uh, control z to actually undo that so what we can do over here is to click the activate and hide on any of these objects i'll just click the activate slash hide just to hide the shoes so basically that's to show you how to hide these shoes and i think you can do things like change heels to down so this uh, character's foot is actually uh, down right and awesome and we can do things like select the entire avatar i believe it's Control a or you could just click and hold on right click and say select select all faces and you can actually select the whole thing basically like that and that's for the 3d view the 2d view is no much different the same orbit tool works for the 2d view and the 3d view as well so we can pan zoom in and out using the mouse uh, scroll wheel and we can grab and pan by holding the middle mouse button now because this is a 2d view if we uh, right click like we in the 3d view to rotate we cannot rotate because this is a 2d view right so that brings us to the quick uh, tools on how to rotate pan and we can actually see our context sensitive menus so over here on the left we have our history tool so in case we've actually uh, changed some things we can always go back in history and you know go back to our steps for instance if we wanted to bring the shoes back we'll go over here and if we wanted to go where we are currently we'll just click over here to get back to the state we can also save history states 
for instance if we like what we did here we just click on this state and this is going to save the state we are in and we can jump between states so this is our 3d state we can you know uh, we can rename this state and I can just call it uh, I hid the uh, shoes like so for this state so that's what I did for that state I hid the shoes so maybe if you change the hair you can say I changed the hair if you you know created a new stitch on the object I created a new stitch on the object so basically that's how you can drag in an avatar by going to the library where you can have access to fabrics textures materials you can have things like uh, trims and you can have your uh, modular library like here so the modular library is going to contain sub components for instance you can do things like create the design for the bra or you know for the panties you can design a wristband you can design different sections of the fabric and you can drag and drag these and have these as modular assets your object browser is going to contain all the objects you have in your scene and can quickly move over them and then like I explained earlier you can actually see your properties over here so what else haven't we covered yeah, we're going to look at these shortcut menus but if you want to change the uh, GPU or processor settings you see this arrow right here we can actually use this to change those properties like so so if I left click and hold this you can set it to fast GPU and this is going to be using our GPU you can actually see the preset we're using right here it's called fast GPU and this is very good especially when you have uh, Nvidia or AMD or any of the graphics you know built in dedicated graphics processor you can actually use that to take advantage of your uh, process you can set this back to normal and this would actually work well with your uh, CPU and it's going to show you the CPUs in use and this is very good when you're working and creating layers in your project so you can do things like add a separate kind of fabric here you can add a texture and you can also you know toggle things on and off and you can add points right here so these options right here are going to be your sewing mending your mesh creation options and we also have various options right here that contain things like measurement so like i said you're not going to be using everything there are some tools that you find you're going to be using the most and some tools you're not going to be using you know that much and what you can easily do is each time you hover any menu it's actually going to give you a hint that shows you what that menu actually does so that's going to be for the uh, UI and I haven't covered everything about the UI but that's pretty much you know uh, how the UI works and like I said we have various modes and each mode you change is going to you know give you a context sensitive menu so we are on the animation mode and we can see we have the timeline at the bottom basically you can do make changes like rotate your character and kind of like save that animation and you can use that to present that to a client or your project team so let's go ahead and see the print layout the print layout is going to also have its own context sensitive menus you can actually see the menus on the left and the right have changed and basically this is going to allow you to you know have more of these options so let's go ahead and set this to the uh, emulator so and this is going to give you a little warning that you might actually lose some things and basically this works with a fabric kit and we actually use this to prepare a kit and gives a step-by-step -step process to do this and each of these steps if you don't understand what they fully do you can click on tutorial to actually get a one-on-one -on -one hands on view to see what it does so let's get back to the modular view and like I explained the modular view is going to allow you to use pre-built kits or materials or assets you imported and then have them over here and you can use a modular block setup to create that and let's go ahead and see the UV editor this is going to allow you to edit the 2D coordinates that have been wrapped around a 3D object so if you're used to a software like Blender, Maya, 3ds Max, Modo, Cinema 4D the UV editor should not be a new concept it's basically a two-dimensional representation of a 3d object in your scene and I'm just going to go back to simulation mode and we actually got a warning 
that if we haven't made any saves, we might lose access to our saves. Now, if you find out these menus are kind of like, you know, small, what you can do is just drag out these sections so you can change or, you know, increase the size of your user interface. So I'll go ahead and drag in Naomi back to the scene. And like I said, if we quickly want to, you know, kind of like bring this back, we can use the history tool to uh, click this back to our hit shoes. So loading a hit restate and let's proceed to load out Naomi and let's click OK. And what this is going to do is going to bring back our camera states, our zoom levels and then bring back our character to the point we left her without the shoes. So it's actually quite awesome to use your history states. And also first thing we also need to do is to make sure that we can save our project and make sure you know you don't lose anything so i'm just going to click on save project and click on proceed and i'll go to my own project folder so i'm going to go to my new volume 3d fashion mlx projects and we're just going to say naomi underscore test and hit the enter button just so that we have saved our project and we don't lose any changes we have. And you can also create your incremental saves. Now, Clotrity also gives you an online option to you know, save your projects. You can always sign in to the Clo library and you can have access to your projects online. But basically what I like doing is to use a cloud space to store my own personal uh, projects. So that's it for the interface. There are lots and lots of other tools that are hitting, but just for now, this is a basic interface setup. And next, what we're going to do is to create a nice material for this character and see how we can simulate that material. Now, there's some handy little tips and tricks I wanted to give you, especially when you want to quickly turn your character around or check your character from the side view or check the back of your character. If you want to do that, just press the two is going to set you to the front view. Four is going to set you to the side view. Six is going to set you to a flipped side view. And then eight is going to give you access to a back view. So these are just the shortcut keys you can press with your keyboard. Now there are some built in garments. If you click on the garments and uh, just double click on that, you can actually see we have some uh, female t-shirts, a male t-shirt. We also have a female t-shirt version with a circular neck. And then we also have that male t-shirt. Uh, these are all uh, .z packs. So basically these are sets that contain the uh, fabric material. And also another thing I'd like to show you if we get back to this garment is that this item right here isn't actually downloaded on your system. So if you want this design, all you have to do is just click on that and this is going to download this to your uh, work area and your workspace and it's going to be persistent basically that means next time you load this you'll have access to it if i open up this avatar and click the drop down and click the female you can actually notice these are also in my persistent workspace so you might actually find that uh, download uh, section right there that's uh, that means it's not available so you can also find other poses you want for example for the female version too so you can download these poses and have them in your scene in case you want to pose the character so that's just uh, by the way i just wanted to point that out for you so with that what we're going to do is to create a nice basic fabric for this character nothing too complex because again this is just for beginners we don't want to do anything super crazy and complex right here so to start working with the garments, let's just go over to click on the garment. I'll double click on this. And this is a default female garment that was created for this avatar. So let's just double click that and see. Uh, it's telling us the file can be damaged. I'll just click on I want to proceed and this should maintain. Uh, let's click open and size from a garment file. Or we could just leave the first one on. It's not a problem. So here we can actually see something going on here. So what is going on right here? So what we can see right now in our garment view, which is our 3D view, is that we can actually see a garment right here that has been like stitched, uh, created. And we can actually see the parts that have been, you know, kind of like created for this character. 
and we can actually see that it's getting ready to be stitched also on our 2d view and remember we can always you know have a maximized view on this and we can also switch this to our uh, 2d view only so we can actually see how that garment is actually placed on this so this is the front the back and these are the sides for the shoulders and this is a left and right section for each of these garments this is a built-in garment and there are tools that we can actually use to build this garment so i'll just go over to the uh split view and kind of like zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're working with and i'll just zoom out on this character so that's how you can quickly you know drag in a built-in garment and if i kind of like click on that we can actually see that it's actually been uh, kind of like stitched to this character so what we can do from here is to look at these points kind of like move them around and kind of like see how this is actually working on this character so that's the neck right here if we look at this we can just zoom in and go over this neck and we can actually see that object on the 2d window right so this is the 2d window that's the left side this is the right side but actually uh, it's actually our left so if this is the right for the character that's the left and this if this is the left for the character that's our right so but i'll just use the characters uh, our own reference view and i'll just call this left and call this right like so we can also see the right section so basically anytime you select an object on this we can actually switch it over from here now this is a default fabric we can add new fabric materials to this object and we just pinch and move this around and see this view so this is what the simulation view means right the simulation views allow you to see the fabric in real time and you can actually do things like create simulations and kind of like move things around basically that's what the simulation uh, view does and again if you want some space you can quickly switch over to the uh, 3d window and you can actually see what you're working with right here so right now a core and key concept i want you to take away from this is that you can actually create you know these pattern designs right here directly on your 2d window and then when you're done you can actually see how that pattern works on your character on the 3d window so again that's the core technique or you could just directly create the fabric on the character in the 3d window and you can actually see that output so either way you can walk from left to right from the garment window to the 2d pattern window and that's also going to be fine as well there's no uh, written law or rule on stone on and now don't remember that our history states are there to help us if we go back to our old state we actually notice that these lines show you where the sole lines are and these lines are going to show you where this object is going to stitch basically that's where this fabric is going to stitch on these objects so the red lines and these green lines are just showing you this object is going to be stitched on this side and if you want to see that in action just press the space bar and this would actually simulate that uh, on the uh, object so very very important you can always go back to your history states and then once you're happy with something you can just press space bar to run the simulation also that's why this is called the uh, simulation mode because this is where we can create a simulation of and see how your uh, fabric is doing on this uh, object you can actually see that you can pull and kind of like stretch these points just to see how that's working on your object so now that we've been using the int software and we've seen the interface a little bit sometimes you might want to have a little more space to work with for instance you can actually see we have our model but we're not really taking advantage of the scene we can actually zoom out and zoom in but we just want a little bit of extra space to work with so this is what you can do if you notice over here for instance if you look at the library you notice an arrow that is pointing left it's just telling you hey i want to dock this view so if you click on that the library is going to be docked on the left to bring it back just click on the library and you have it back and let's go ahead and dock the history states as well and we can even dock the modular folder now you can actually see that we have more extra space to work with and we can always bring back these menus if we want just so, so we can have some nice space and if we move the mouse or the cursor in-between the garment view and the 2d view you can actually notice this uh, arrow that it's kind of like 
pointing left and right that's a divider so we can just use this to drag this so you can have more of a view as well so each of these can be docked we can even dock the object browser and dock the property editor as well just so we can have more space to work with you can see we can do that another thing i also like to show you is that these menu icons you can actually dock them to the top just like in traditional applications and softwares so we can actually do that and in fact let's go ahead and customize how we can place these menu bars these toolbars to the top of the view so to do that let's go to settings and let's go under user uh, user settings let's just click on that and it's going to open up this menu let's click on the user interface and on the user in interface under the mode and toolbar what we're going to do is to see the toolbar 3d toolbar it says left that means this 3d toolbar is docked to the left side we can just dock this to the top if we want and for the 2d toolbar as well we could also dock this to the top like so and another pro tip is that don't forget to click on this slider and drag down for more options you can actually see we have more options we can use to customize our project so with that let's just go ahead and close this and you can actually see our toolbars are docked at the top which again gives us extra space to work with so another thing that's frustrating when you're beginning is that each time you can't find these menus it becomes frustrating don't worry all you need to do is to click on the library for instance if you're done with it just click this back arrow that means you want to kind of like collapse and dock that view and with that you can see we have a nice interface we can actually work with that's a bit free you know a little spacey and we can look at our designs and see how our designs actually work to undo any of these changes you can just uh, click on ctrl z to undo and to run the simulation you can just click the space bar to run a simulation like so because we are on the simulation mode right so let's go ahead and start seeing how we can sew a piece of fabric and say maybe we want to create a skirt or trouser or want to create some nice like arm bracelets for this character let's go ahead and see how we can do that right now so let's look at the tools we are going to be using to create patterns you know to create textures and to add stitches so here if we look at the 2d pattern window we can actually see a set of rows at the top and then a set of rows at the bottom right here so here we can actually see we have measurement tools we have a text tool here and to edit annotations and add some text here and basically these uh, tool tips tools at the top row of our 2d pattern window they're actually used for creating and editing patterns basically that's what we have on the top row so and at the bottom row right here we can actually see these are sets of tools that have been divided by a slight partition so each of these like the first set of these tools i'll just call them set one now these are used for creating sewing lines so if you want to think about you're like sewing something and you want to create your sewing lines these are the top tools to use so the first set is going to be used for creating your sewing lines now the next set of tools right here i've used to actually create your uh, textures so basically you can add a 2d texture to these tools and you can also do things like you know do your seams and you can actually do your steam taping basically like when you're ironing you can actually use your steam taping on the fabric and these third set of tools they're actually used for uh, stitching right so you can add your top stitch you can you know use a segment top stitch and you can also use some puckering and more tools here you can add a layer and sub layer and you can also use a fill to fill out your areas so basically this is your 2d tools and you use them in the 2d window like i just mentioned to create your patterns you can edit those patterns you can add sewing lines you can add textures and you can also add your top stitches and again there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts 
each time you actually see access to any of these tools, you actually notice that there are keyboard shortcuts. You can find out what keyboard shortcut you're using by just leaving the mouse over it and you'll see this tooltip that will tell you. For instance, if we want to add a transform pattern, the keyboard shortcut is A. And if we wanted to do something like maybe edit our sewing, we'll actually use B. But my uh, good tip is for a beginner is that just to try and get used to the tools because you'll be using most of these tools. They are tools that you're going to use most of the time. They are the commonly used tools and then they are tools that you rarely use. So use the program for like a week, a month as take your time to use the program. Always, you know, try to find out where things are. Don't be too concerned about shortcuts and eventually by the time you are beginning to get proficient with using the program, you'll begin to use those shortcuts and you can start, you know, trying to get the shortcuts and using those shortcuts for the tools that you use mostly. But for right now, just try and familiarize yourself with the tools, where they are, where you can access them. You know, you can just try and click them and actually, you know, try to find where things are. So stay away from shortcuts initially. After you get used to it, you can start using your shortcuts. You know, and also by you know, pointing out where these things are, where these tools are, where the, you know, where the shape tool is, you know, where the polygon line is, where's the annotation, where's the tape. By the time you just look at them, after a while, you just get used to it. So that's just my pro tip piece of advice, by the way. So let's see how we can transform or move a pattern. Now, each time you select an object, we can actually see what's happening here. So if we select this object right here, we actually see the tool here it has been highlighted. It means this is the tool we're using. So this is the transform pattern tool. If I you know, go over to the next one, which is the edit pattern, if I click on that, you can actually see we have these points and I can actually select these Bezier points. We can see we have Bezier handles and we can actually move these handles to edit those points like so. Right, so that's what the, that's doing. So I'll just undo those changes real quick. And I'll just zoom out because it's just to zoom into our face like so. So that's the edit pattern tool. You can edit a edge, an edge rather, and you can actually edit these points by clicking on each of these points and kind of like editing them. Each time we select those points, we can actually see here on the garment view that we actually have this 3D gizmo that's appearing. So uh, A is for the transform pattern tool. If we click on that, we can actually use that to transform or move a pattern. So basically we are kind of like moving this pattern to any point we want. I'll just use undo to do that. So you can do that by just clicking on any of these and just practice moving these patterns. This is the uh, design for the back. This is for the front right here. This is for the color and this is for the front. So if you press A, you can uh, can't even go to the 3D view and select this object. You actually notice that it's been highlighted. So what you're selecting on the 2D view is also being highlighted on the garment or the 3D view. I'm just going to call it 3D view because it's super awesome to call it a uh, just use the 3D view. So uh, yeah, so that's it. So if you select an object with the um, with the uh, transform pattern tool or simply uh, shortcut is the letter A and you actually select an object. So if you try to uh, move it around, you're actually going to be uh, kind of like transforming this object. So we have it right here. We've just transformed this object from this point to this point. We can also scale the objects by using these scale gizmos. We can remove the locative point. Basically, that's the center of this object. So take a few moments, try and practice around, press A, click on the object and kind of like transform it. When you're done, you can always undo what you've done. And for the next tool is the edit pattern tool. So if I click on Z, this will show us the points that have created this object. And we can select each specific point and do things like dragging and moving those points to change the design, right? And it's also going to be reflected on the other side of that garment. So for instance, if I select these two points by left clicking and dragging, I can go to the 3D view, select this, and this X means the, um, horizontal 2D axis. I can just drag this like so, and you can actually see it's going to update like that as well. I'll just undo that and see what we're working with. So for instance, I've made this change right here to this edge. It's a very weird change. I'm going to press the space bar to simulate that and just to see that I've added a slight allowance to this point right here underneath the armpit area like so. 
So that's the change I've actually made. Let's just drag this. And I just basically made that uh, quite slightly uh, long. And I press the space bar to simulate that change I've made. Let's go ahead and make changes to this edge. So if we select this bottom edge right here, and we could just zoom out here, we'll actually have that uh, showing here. And what we can do is to just drag this downwards a bit and just pull that down a bit like so. And let's do that for the back as well. So if we select this edge, I'll just click left click and drag a selection and I'll make sure this has turned into that cursor. So I'll just drag this point down and also let's just leave it like that and press the space bar so we can simulate and see how this is appearing like so. So we can see that we can actually modify designs and if this is looking super weird, we can just prick this part and just kind of like poke it and move it around kind of like uh, left click and poke that point just to drag it and see how it's going to be looking on this character. Let's poke this center and poke this one as well just to drag this fabric and see how that's uh, going to look on the object. So basically with these two tools you can just see that you can start making some slight changes to the design like so. So that's for the uh, moving and also for the you know kind of like uh, editing a pattern tool. Editing is going to bring out these points they are called uh, vertices and basically that's what uh, editing is going to do. It's going to expose these vertices and we can use that to kind of like create a different design. For instance if we wanted to change this um, v-neck all we need to do is to just select this point and just drag this point like so and let's re-simulate and we can actually see what we've done here and we actually have this uh, like so which is very terrible so we could just uh, undo what we did and press the space bar to re-simulate. I think I need to undo on this window. So I'll just undo, undo, like so. Good. So we're good to go. All right. So we have this existing shape that has been, uh, you know, we dragged in using, or in the library, we went to our garment and we pulled in this female outfit and we dragged it into the scene. So uh, let's go ahead and collapse that by clicking on the arrow. And so how do we uh, add a new design? Basically, how was this created and how do we modify this design? Now, again, we're in our 2D pattern window. And just like I mentioned anywhere, your 2D pattern window is for creating and editing patterns. And it's this set here at the top row. We saw how we could just, you know, select with the A and select a specific pattern like so. And then we saw how we could edit a pattern by pressing Z. And you can actually know that you're in the edit mode if you actually see these uh, vertices like so up here in your uh, 2D window. So to edit a shape, right, if you want to create a new shape, all we need to do is to go over here and click on this box right here. So this is going to show us some polygonal uh, kind of like shapes, not just polygons, we have rectangles, ellipse, and we also have a spiral as well. So uh, this is an internal polygon tool, but let's focus on the uh, this folder right here with the polygon tool. So let's uh, click on the rectangle tool like so and just click and drag a rectangular shape like so. It could be any shape, but I'll just drag this length right here. So what just happened right now? So we can actually see in our 3D view, if I hold down the um, right mouse uh, button, right click, and I just hold down, we can actually see we have created a polygonal 3D shape in our scene right here. So this is a 3D shape, but this is a 2D shape that has its two dimensional axes. So that's one way to create a shape. You could create a shape. Again, let's go ahead and redo that. So let's say we want to create an ellipse. Once we create it, it's waiting for us to draw that elliptical shape. And I'll just draw an ellipse like this. And if I left click to validate, we can actually see that we have drawn an ellipse and it's trying to kind of like uh, store that in memory. And we can see that we have drawn an ellipse in the scene. So uh, let's go ahead and delete that. So let's press A to the select tool. And what we are actually going to do is to delete this guy 
and also to delete this guy. The reason why I'm deleting is, is because I want to show you another way to create this by specifying the size. Because this is a uh, fashion tool and you actually have measurements of your material. You want to cut your material so you need to specify the size of your material. And to do that is fairly super simple. So let's click the uh, polygon tool and this time around let's uh, click and sorry about that guys let me just go ahead and deselect that select here click and hold the box and let's go to sorry this is where i'm supposed to go i'll go to rectangle and this time around i'm going to uh, left click in the view so by left clicking in the view it's going to bring out a pop-up that shows you the width and size of the object you want to create so let's say i have a fabric and i want to create a uh, rectangular shape or a square shape of uh let's say a uh, six by two a width of uh, three and a height of six we can just set a three inches by a height of six and we can actually see this light material we have here if we click ok then it's going to create that material with a specified setting so two ways you can quickly create materials let's go ahead and just uh, look at that real quick let's go over the um, rectangle let's click on that polygon tool and let's go to the ellipse let's click once and then we can see we can set a diameter so here we can set the width or the radius of this shape and then with that we can actually create a shape if i set a width of let's say seven this is going to create this object in the scene and we can actually see it right here to select that we can select this object right here if we want to edit our points let's go to edit to edit the points i'm getting kind of repetitive here but i guess you understand where we're coming from so i'll select this one and press delete because i want us to work with this object right here so this is the object we created and this is the object in the view all right so what we just did we created this rectangle shape and we specified some dimensions for it if we wanted to use this for instance on the arm how do we know the circumference of this arm basically if you want to measure let's say the width of this uh, avatar's neck or you have a client and you like to measure your client's neck and try to find out you know what width of of material or cloth you need to cut you can't just keep you know uh, manually creating shapes and just editing them like that you have to be precise and make your measurements so how do we make measurements and that's quite straightforward we actually use the measurement tool so here over on the 3d view if we look at the top row by the right you'll actually notice these two, two tapes so here's the uh, edit measurement tool for the avatar and the surface circumference measure for the avatar and here we're going to have the edit measure for the garment and then the linear measure, linear measure for the garment so these are for the avatars and this is what you use so let's go ahead and click the uh, edit measure for the avatar and this is going to change this menu right here and if we go over here to the edit measure what we can do is to just see this so this is going to be highlighted blue let me just try and zoom into this width of this arm and it's going to be highlighted blue if i click on that we can actually see it's telling us the dimension right here so this is about 8.25 inches so let me just go ahead and go back to that tool and let's go ahead and just zoom in and if i click on this length here it's 8 uh, 8.48 so i can just say an 8.5 inches so that's the size of this uh, shape right here so it's 8.5 uh, inches we can even see that for the uh, wrist and say we want to measure this for the wrist if i click on this so the wrist is 5.45 let me just go ahead and click that again so it's 5.5 inches so that's 5.56 so we can just do a 5.6 inches or you can just make it six inches to give that extra you know allowance if trying to create a garment that has that uh width so with that in mind you can actually try and see how you can create a circumference so again another tool you can use is the circumference measure for the avatar so i'll just click on that and i'll just click on the basic circumference measure the first one and basically what this is going to do is to measure 
the area around the shape. So a circumference is the area around the shape. In case you skipped your primary school mathematics, that's what this was for. You're going to use the software one day in the future and you need to know what a circumference is. So I believe it's the uh, region or area around the shape. So if I drag this and kind of like uh, rotate this and I click another point and you can actually see it's drawing a uh, circumference around this. It's actually going through this entire shape. So basically it's about eight point you know 8.85 inches and basically the other time we clicked on the uh, circumference tool I'll just click on uh, I press escape to this uh, deselect that if we go back to our edit measure tool and we just click on this right here we are going to select this I'm just go ahead here and click on this line it's kind of like difficult sometimes to select the line Oops, I think I zoomed in too much here and click on that. That's eight point, you know, four five. So basically, if we just wanted to have precise measurement, we can use that uh, basic circumference measure. Uh, we just click, drag and release. And it's going to try and measure the circumference around a specified path we've created. So let me just go ahead and select this and kind of like zoom in a bit. And kind of like just rotate that and kind of like click here. And so we could just click two points and we can have the circumference around an area. So that's how you can do that. We can always go back to the um, select tool. So here, or you can just press Q if you're on any of these menus. And that's how you can take a precise and accurate measurement. You can do things like measure the uh, neck and it actually takes a little bit of practice. So we can actually just go here, click this point and also click this point and just uh, drag. And now it's giving us the dimension. It's the neck is about 11.4 uh, inches. I just pressed escape. And if we go back to the uh, basic measure for the avatar, if I, uh, like I said, this is kind of like tricky. So if I select this, so the neck is 11.50 inches for this avatar. So if you actually measure the neck of your friend in real life and your neck is about 14 inches, you actually know what kind of material you're going to create that will have that circumference of 14 inches when you kind of like uh, fold this, right? So that's how you, uh, you kind of like do that. So we can go ahead and set this back by clicking back on our select tool or our move tool. And one cool thing you'll actually notice is that if we are on the 3D view and this is our move tool, and if we are on the 2D view, this is our transform pattern tool. Basically these two tools do the same thing, right? So if we're over here, we can actually see we've selected this object. And if we're over here, because we have our um, transform pattern tool, it does the same thing. And when we select this, you can actually see these two. Now, when we, put in this plane shape, you can actually see something weird going on here. If this is our uh, view, you might actually need to kind of like rotate this object to see where things are so that you can actually be in the appropriate view. So here I'm just pressing five and I can now start moving this object just to align it around the arm because I want to create uh, some just basic nice fabric around the arm. So I can do that by moving these three axes. So like I explained, the Y axis is the height axis, basically the up and down axis. So if I click on the Y axis and drag this, we can drag the object up and down. The red axis is the X axis, basically is the axis that moves things left and right. So I can just move this left and right like so. And then the Z axis is the Z is the axis that looks it's like pulling and pushing towards you. So if I hold the Z axis, if I kind of like rotate the character like this, now we can't really see that, but if we have that Z axis, we can actually use that to push and pull through. But there's something weird going on about this orientation of this tool right here. It's kind of like looking weird right now. And to fix that, we just need to go to the gizmo settings and change the gizmo settings to our world coordinate uh, settings. And to have access to the gizmos, let's go to preferences and let's click on gizmo. 
Let's try local coordinate. Now the local coordinate is super awesome because like I explained, we can actually see the Z axis is telling us that, hey, if we click on this, we can move this towards me and you. So basically if this uh, avatar is facing us, it means this Z axis is going to be moving towards the front like so. So here, this is it moving to this axis. So let's set this and let's press five to see the top alignment. So I'm just going to make sure we're selecting this axis. And this is actually us going to rotate this. I don't want to rotate it. So I'll just undo that change just to have this object like so. And what I'm trying to do is to click on it. And we can click on the rotation. So here on this axis, we have three coordinates here. And we can rotate this object based on this axis. So I'll click this side and kind of like rotate the X axis. And I'll grab this just to uh, turn on the, using the right mouse button and just zoom in. And what I want to do is to just move this towards Z like so. And we just keep looking at this and moving it like so. And the next thing I'm going to do is just turn it down and then grab the Y axis and drag this down like so. And I'll try grab the Z axis rotation to rotate the object. And we could just move this like so. And we can also go back to the gizmos and let's try wall coordinates or gizmo and try screen coordinates. And if we go over here, we can select the entire length. When the cursor becomes a cross, we can select the entire length of the object so that you can use that to place this object in this position. All right, so now that we've placed this object precisely where we want it, we can press the simulate. And this object is going to fall. And because it's using physics, it's going to fall off the hands of our character because our avatar is kind of like um, our avatar has the, the, the hands of the avatar is slightly sloped. So it's not going to stand there. It's actually going to kind of like fall off. So that's one uh, cool thing about uh, that. So we just undo that and see how we can work with that. So you can have an avatar that has some slight poses and meanwhile that arm is going to be stretched. So um, now moving this object is could actually get challenging sometimes and basically say for instance we wanted to wrap this around the leg of our uh, avatar right here there are useful tools we can use to take advantage of this uh, avatar and that's going to be the arrangement points. So basically you could have a uh, flat 2D shape like this and then we can arrange that around this object. So let's go ahead and click this to select it and I'll just quickly set the gizmo to local coordinates and I'll just uh, select this and kind of like drag it like so and I'll just zoom in. And basically what I want to do is to make this rectangular shape wrap around the leg of our object the character. And I'll just switch this over to the side view. Don't forget our keyboard shortcuts for the front and side view. Uh, sometimes the gizmo can be tricky. So I'll just set this back to screen coordinates. So I know which of the axes I'm selecting. And I'll just drag this slightly up on the Y axis, which is the height axis. And I have this just where I want it because I want to wrap this around our character's leg. Let's just go up a bit. Now we're going inside. I'll just don't worry about that. We'll just drag this here. So world coordinates makes it easier to you know make a selection around the object. But if you want to have your precise you know settings, you can switch over to local and this will give you a much more localized or average uh, view on this object. So to, like I said, there's an arrangement point and we can easily use that arrangement point to arrange this cylindrical shape around the leg of our avatar. So over here on the left view of our avatar window, there are some tools that are built in to take advantage of, you know, things like making selections or showing points on an avatar. If we go over here and click over right here on the avatar display, we have the show avatar and here we have the show arrangement points. 
and basically we can actually see bounding volumes x-ray joints avatar measures and 3d pen let's click on the show arrangement points and basically it is going to show you some points where you could make some arrangements on the avatar like so so this is an arrangement point and we can use this object this piece of fabric we created and try and make this arrangement on one of these you know points we have right here right so sometimes it might not suit your needs but we just have something to you know work with and when you make that arrangement you can always change that all right now to use it all we need to do is to select any of these points and you can it will actually give you an idea of how it's going to look like when it's wrapped around this avatar so for instance if we select this point so let's find a nice point and just see how that's going to look like so if i select the foot right here it's going to wrap it around like this and let's just go ahead and select this arm and you can actually see it's wrapped this around our arm and then that shows us that we have actually made a very poor decision on trying to wrap around this object because it, we need to measure the objects properly and then you can actually see where it is so you can play around with this you can find any point you want i'll just put this on the um, on the car avatar's right arm and let's just move on from there so now that we're satisfied with where we want to place this let's go ahead and hide these selection points like so so we just go over here and click that again and the shortcut tool is shift f but just know that it's actually around this uh, menu so what we're going to do is to just do a simple sewing and basically what we want to do is to close out this edge right here we want to sew this edge and sew this edge right here so that we can actually have this uh, object kind of um you know joining these two edges together and to do that we can also go over to the uh, let's try segment sewing tool and basically I'll click on this starting segment here and I'll click on I'll click on this and I'll uh, kind of like try to move it over here to the next edge and click on that and if we press space bar you actually see we've sewn that and it's going to you know fall off to the ground because again it's not really sitting down on this avatar properly and it's simulating using uh, gravity so i'll just go ahead and undo that and let's see how we can uh, actually change this so here what we should do is to kind of like edit the dimensions of this object so that it would be closer to our avatar's skin like so now once we can edit the dimensions of this object we've already created then what we can do next is to kind of like sew these edges together and to do that let's just look for the diameter and then reduce that and see how we can kind of like bring this closer to the skin so what we're going to do is to edit our uh, shape right here because i want it to kind of like fit this arm and then we run the simulation and then sew this edge basically a simple stitch that is going to join this edge to this edge so first in our 2d view let's go ahead and click on our edit pattern and let's select these uh, this top here and we could just drag that slightly to the left i just drag it over to this point and let's do the same with the bottom edge here or bottom point and i'll just drag that to over here and basically what i'm trying to do is to just reduce the size of this, this is a crude way to do it so but uh, it's just to get results faster and show you how we can do this so now that we have that let's just test this and see if this is going to kind of like work so with that what we're going to do is to go over to the uh, second row with the uh, segment sewing and let's click on the segments and what we're going to do is to select either uh, from here so i'm going to uh, select this segment and I want to sew it to this segment like so and basically now that we have that let's just try and run a simulation for this so I'll press spacebar it's actually sewn that and we can actually see this has uh, sewn this object on the character's arm and basically uh, that's a very simple way of adding geometry and then you know kind of like sewing the geometry on the object we can pinch this we can move it around just to see how this object is going to kind of like look like just pinch that and move these edges just to see that in action like so so 
So that's a very uh, crude way. Like I said, they're very accurate uh, methods. We can measure the uh, circumference of the arm. And then with the circumference, we know the length of material we can create. And then we can create our shape tool such that we can use that to cut and sew the object. So uh, I don't want this to be super long because that's very long, but I kind of like created this to show you how you could, you know, loading the avatar. We looked at the interface. We saw how we could uh, create and run a simulation. We saw how we could, you know, work with our history states. We saw a brief overview of the library. We saw how we could load in an avatar. We saw how we could like, you know, kind of like measure things on our avatar. We show how we could, you know, bring out selection points. We saw some tips and tricks on the user settings and the interface. And basically, if it's your first day using uh, Clo 3D, like I said, it's going to look overwhelming. But, you know, uh, with practice, with use, you'd actually get better at, you know, using the program and you'd be able to, you know, kind of like learn from experience. So just play around with the tool, get familiar with the interface, you know, you can join the online community, you can ask questions, and if you have anything you'd like to see, just let me know. So hopefully um, this has helped you understand what the software can do on the surface. We haven't scratched the surface yet. We haven't looked at all the tools yet. So uh, yeah, I'll just uh, exit right now. And in the next set of tutorials I'm planning to do, we're going to focus more on specific sections. But the key and core section of Clo 3 d is to be able to measure a fabric, measure someone or measure data from an avatar and then use that data inside and then use it to create seams to stitch to sew to cut to weld and to join so basically your edit section here is going to you know take care of that so most of the work you find out you'll be using most of these tools right here and when you're done and you want to like showcase and add materials you're going to be using this view so uh thank you very much guys for watching and i'll see you in the next Clothe for you quick tip.